June 26th of an unknown year, five children suddenly vanished with no evidence as to where they had gone. There were five children, and there were four animatronics. If there was just one more animatronic, it would make sense that the children's souls were the things that were controlling the robots. It is believed that what is called the Golden Freddy is the most supernatural of them all, glitching through walls and haunting anybody who enters the building. But nobody knows why he is the most powerful, nor why he is there at all. Today on FNAF Unsolved, we look at the incidents that debatably changed Freddy's forever, that may or may not have ever happened. We explore the earliest animatronics and their malfunctions that could have also led to the shutdown of the company. If you thought the missing children's incident was crazy, just wait until you hear this one. Not only does it create more suspicion for the animatronics being powered by the souls of the dead, but it also shows just how horrible this place was. Here's a fun fact for you to question more things, however. Freddy Fazbear actually has a human handprint on his face. Of course we don't know whose handprint it is. A child, a worker's, Barney the dinosaur. But it's there. And if you're not convinced that Freddy's is a terrible place yet, just wait until the end of this video. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, home to multiple murders and haunted animatronics that go savage at night. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica and Foxy. However, unknown to most, there's a fifth animatronic. A golden coloured Freddy that was seen in the establishment moving without an endoskeleton. Workers say that this animatronic was an old model that was scrapped and thrown away, but it is totally possible that the soul inhabits the robot. Phone guy said that someone used a yellow suit in the safe room for something that it shouldn't have been used for. Oh, hello! Uh, what on earth are you doing there? Uh, didn't you get the memo? Uh, the place is closed down, at least for a while. Someone used one of the suits. Uh, we had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. Freddy's has a lot more history than you think. Before Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was Freddy Bear's family diner, an establishment only containing two animatronics, Fredbear and Spring Body. Both animatronics were yellow coloured, and Fredbear is said to be the first design of Freddy Fazbear. It's thought that Fredbear and Golden Freddy have a large correlation that connects them. A bear and a bunny. Don't bears eat bunnies? <laughs> yeah, they do. And the proportions are totally off. But I'm not as concerned as I sound. The thing about these animatronics is they can also be worn as suits, so you can literally take out its insides and jump in its skin. A bit disgusting, but we do see how Golden Friday turns out without his endoskeleton. Like how I look in the morning, tired, slouched, and not really bothered with anything. I feel for you, Golden Friday. In an unknown year, something went wrong at Fredbear's family diner, and it could be classed as another murder. Fredbear's was holding a birthday party, until unexpectedly, a small child was thrown into the mouth of the star animatronic. The robotic parts crushed through the child's head, and he was sent to A&E. Who was the child? William Afton identified it as his own son, but his name is disclosed and unknown to us. This incident was tragic, but not everything seems to add up. Firstly, Afton's foxy-headed son was the one responsible for the death of his own brother. Why would he do such a thing? But also, there may have been confusion about the details of the bite, and if they were ever real at all. Did you ever have a gang, like edgy 15 year olds hanging out at a children's birthday party, being edgy? I always wished that we wore similar but different accessories, like for example masks. Imagine being the foxy of the group, always alone and away from your mates, or the chica, you know, always holding food and you're so popular that people make fan art of you. Oh Google, you really do personalise the ads I see. The reason people do not believe in this so-called Bite of 83 is because of another event in which a similar act occurred. This one happened in 1987, and the details of this one are also missing. Seems pretty popular, right? Biting. In the span of about five years, more deaths occurred from animatronic bites than Pokemon Go. Now that that is a statement and a half. So there's two events that may or may not have happened. So without further ado, let's get to the theories 
on what actually happened in this period of the 1980s. The first theory suggests that there never were two incidents. It could be the result of a Mandela effect, in which a population agrees on something, though it isn't actually true. Everyone has been brainwashed into thinking that these events occurred, though they hadn't. It's like when Nelson Mandela supposedly died in the prison in the 1980s, but it was a false memory shared with the population. It's almost proof for a multiverse, the strange concept of Schrodinger's cat, a cat in a box, both dead and alive. Both realities exist, but in separate universes. Did the bites ever happen, or was everyone brainwashed into thinking they did? But that leaves the question, why? Why would anybody do that? The pizzerias are bad enough with some sicko killing children. Clearly these events are too big to be completely fake, which means we will have to look at another theory to see what is truly going on. This theory suggests that one of them happened, and the other was a mix-up of years. How do we know one of them happened? Cameras. William Afton secretly set up cameras everywhere in the diner and around his house. He caught the event on tape. But let's pose the question, 83 or 87? And once again I'm going to make this point, does nobody have a clock? Seriously, somebody must have known what year this happened. The cameras looked to say 1983, as a TV broadcast of Fred Bear and Friends was on during the bite. However, this could easily have been a recording or on a tape. You can never trust Afton after what he has done so even this could have been faked. The third theory says the complete opposite. The bite of 87 was the real deal. The guy on the phone during Mike's shift talked about the event and how it played out. So just be aware, the characters do tend to wander a bit. Uh, they're left in some kind of free roaming mode at night. Uh, something about their servos locking up, they get turned off for too long. Uh, they used to be allowed to walk around during the day, too, but then there was the bite of 87. Yeah. It's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe, you know? Damn, the frontal lobe. That's massive damage. But you could probably survive it. You might have a few problems with it, though. If I were a zombie, here, take my advice. I would try and eat the entire brain. There's no chance of living then. Life hack. The man could have gotten confused with the bite of 83, but it doesn't look like the frontal lobe was the injured part. The only other thing we can deduce is that Foxy has a broken jaw, and nobody knows why. I guess you could say, bite or no bite, life or no life, this universe is overly complicated, and due to the mixed opinions about the topic, and a lack of reliability of evidence to support any theory. This case remains unsolved.